The Medieval Babes is a British musical ensemble founded in 1996 by Dorothy Carter and Catherine Blake. The group yes. includes Catherine's colleagues from the band Miranda Sex Garden, as well it as did. other it friends. Did. It did. It, shared, there has, you know, it did in the past. There no, there's no one in that band now in here, but there have been many people in the band who were in Miranda Sex Garden as well and who are now, actually. So, yeah, there's a lot of cross-pollination between various musical projects. Yeah. Indeed. And, um, yeah, yeah the, as, a, as well as other friends who joined you in the group at the start, um, you're all shared the love of medieval music and uh, Catherine welcome to the show it's nice to have you on hi there so nice to be on the show I mean they they didn't thank you for having me they didn't all share a love of medieval music but I made sure they did by the time I'd finished with them <laughs> <laughs> well there's lots of, there's lots of it on your on your new album as well actually but we'll talk about that <laughs> a little bit later on well at least I suppose with medieval music there's not a lot of people that you're going to be paying copyright fees to. No, what they're, 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 fees they're, they're, I mean, I, I do. I mean, I write a lot of the music myself, but I don't have. Yeah. But I use all this ancient text, so or the, the the lyrics come for free, you know. <laughs> of course, of course, absolutely fantastic. I remember actually, um, Cleo Lane and Johnny Dankwith. They used to all of their music that they used to do, like in the jazz era, used to be all like stuff from Shakespeare and things. So there would be Cleo Lane there, you know, she might as well have just had the book in front of her there, William yeah. Shakespeare, and did all sorts of, um, you know, weird and wonderful tunes. Of just improvising with the words, yeah. yeah. That's right, that's yeah. right. And, and it's, it's what's known as public domain, isn't it? So it is. it's normally about 50 years after the death of the writer, things become public domain. But sometimes you can get these estates that go a bit funny, you know, like until yeah. it stopped, you know, they can like get ideas above their station. Like we had a bit of there's some problems with James Joyce's great great grandson, right. you know, didn't want uh, Dorothy Carter, the lady I formed the band with, is sadly no longer with us. She sent yes. some James Joyce to music, and she got she got a really nasty letter from his great 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 grandson or wherever he was going. Wow. Well, as for your association with the medieval babes, you've made your bed and you can lie in it. <laughs> and you can't use it. So, like, you know, who is this? Who is this idiot? Do you know what I mean? Just because James Joyce is his great, great, great grandfather, it doesn't make make him that important necessarily, does it? Do you know what I mean? No, no, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, they did the same thing with like Happy Birthday for many, right. many years, all these decades. Happy Birthday to you. You see, that's I'd have to pay a fee now because yeah, I've yeah, sung that. Yeah. But for some reason, somebody said. Oh, that was written by so and so all those yeah. you know hundred years ago or whatever. Yeah. So I want yeah. me copyright fees for all these Chris um birthday cards that I've had I, the tune playing and it's daft, isn't it, really? I know, and I went on a first aid course recently in the Heimrich maneuver. They can't call it that anymore because his family wanted a thousand pounds every time that word repeat appeared in print. So they had to <laughs> change it to the, the abdominal thrust. I ask you. <laughs> that sounds even worse. <laughs> I know, it sounds dangerous. That could, it, be, you know? that could be anything. That could be. <laughs> I'm just going to do the abdominal thrust. Yeah, yeah, bear with me. Just lie still. Stand, stand back, stand back. <laughs> just stand still. <laughs> <laughs> it won't take long. Right. <laughs> Hilarious. Now, back to the music. And for listeners who are new to Medieval Babes, please could you tell us, Catherine, a bit more about the group and how the idea began? Well, um... I got together some of my friends and I said that I've got a brilliant idea. We're all going to sing some medieval music and we're going to dress up like medieval princesses. This is this is what we're going to do. And they're like, yeah, right. Yeah. And But it was obviously a good idea, wasn't it? Because look, it's still going 27 years later. You can't argue with that, can you? Yeah. Definitely not. And so have you always had a kind of a feel for that kind of music? Well, I, I received a... Uh, classical music education and I particularly enjoyed um, the early music side of that and this is something that I managed to continue on in you know a bit later on in my life and um and but put sort of a more of a glamorous twist on it than you'd get if you were going to sort of a more like um you know a, a, like a, a musical ensemble that were trying to do medieval stuff in a more authentic way yes so we're not in any way trying to be authentic <clears throat> it's all about fantasy and escapism if you like Game of Thrones, you'll probably like Medieval Babes, put it that way. Oh, yeah. definitely, definitely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and 
<laughs> now, have you have you always been a singer growing up? Uh, I've always been singing my whole life since I was uh, since I was like two years old or something. Apparently, I was just singing all the time. You know, couldn't shut me up. You know, <laughs> <laughs> couldn't wait to get on the stage. Eh? No, no, but I've always been a big show off, and you know, the world needs show offs. People need to be entertained. They definitely you know, do. That is yeah. my role in life to entertain people, you know, and that uh, is it's a good thing to do. Particularly at Christmas, people seem to really want to be entertained at Christmas by medieval babes and go to all these spectacular cathedrals and the whole event has a real sense of ceremony to it and people say it's their highlight of their Christmas and that's a really good reason to carry on doing it. Definitely, definitely. And we're gonna talk about the, that uh, tour that you're gonna be going on very, oh, very yes. soon. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, but <laughs> Who are your idols? Who were your idols when you were growing up? And who do you uh, kind of, um, you know, who are your inspirations now as a group as the Medieval Babes? Well, when, when I was a little girl, I think I wanted to be either a Bond girl or fairy tale princess. And you know what? I've managed the, the second one, haven't I? Yes, the certainly. Six, the six year old me would be like, nice one, you know, my future career choices. But, you know, I was in a nativity play when I was six years old and they made me be the donkey. And I was like, I want to be the angel. But now I've shown them, haven't I? Check me out now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. You've definitely left the donkey behind there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with donkeys, but, you know, uh -huh. I've been a donkey. Now, I'm, now I can get to be the fairy tale princess and sing angelic songs and, you know. Of course yeah. you can. And so it's all sound... working out. It's all working out. It definitely is. It's definitely yeah. working there. Um, yeah. Now, have you ever done any other job before becoming a singer? Well... I've only had two jobs in my life. This is going to get a bit racy now, I'm warning you. Right. The only other job I've ever had was being a stripper. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> For real. No, I did actually have a, a, a job being a waitress, but I got fired after one day. Did you? <laughs> so, like I say, I'm, I am a show-off, you see? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't lying about that. You know? So you weren't like a singing waitress or anything in a medieval costume? No, no, none of that. Costume. No, no, none of that, no. It no. probably would work these days. What being a, being a Be, what? But being being like a, a waitress singer in a medieval costume and all the surroundings and things. No, quite no, quirky. I, mean, I wasn't. I wasn't very good at being a waitress. I, like I said, I, I got fired on the first day. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to be on the stage or at home in my studio writing music. You know, those, those are the places that that's where I, I flourish. Yeah, but I'm also obviously I've had to be. You have to be, you know, really good at being a business person this day as well. Though if you're in you do music because most people run everything themselves you've got to know how do. to do all the social media you've you know i've you know i'm, I'm also man managing director of a company and you know there's a hell of a lot of work goes into it it's not all that glamorous but it means that i can do music and do what i love on my own terms so it's all worth it